It's Sunday today, and I figured I'd make another movie. What the heck? Eh? So I purchased this watch online, and it is Mason-based watch. You can see the eyes are compasses, and there's other things in there, I think, that are Mason-based. kind of looks evil, but okay. Um, it's actually a Waltham. So it says Waltham USA right on the tip there. So Waltham actually made this face, probably selectively for some masons. I've already loosened the back up here. But there's the piece there. And I think that's the original case for the original watch. Uh, it's a fairly nice piece, actually. It's a 17 jewel watch. As you can see the here, I'll point out, the amplitude on it is not that great. I just call it the swing, okay, so it's swinging probably 180 on here and it should be going at least 360 around uh, if not more um, so I've had watches go above 500 degrees swing right which is the swing amplitude is kind of half the swing so so the amplitude is not that strong on this I wound it up it runs but I wanted to run it a lot better so in order to make it run better I've got to disassemble it and clean it so I think I'd make a quick video on this and just chat away as I'm doing this so and I know that people are going to criticize because I'm not wearing you know finger cocks and stuff like that but it's an old pocket watch and again I own it if I end up selling it at some point in time sure I might clean it again and before I sell it but I really don't uh, I usually clean it up before I uh, assemble it anyway but if this were a watch and it was for customer and then I'd be wearing finger cocks and taking all those precautions but it's not so I'm not so so here it is so first thing I want to do is take the tension down on the spring the main spring and to do that you make sure the button is pressed in like this and using a toothpick which is the preferred device you uh, you have to get in there where the click spring is here for this which is right here and you have to and this is a kind of a unique click spring you have to push up on that to release it from the uh, the watch I think you do anyway there we go and then you got to be patient and just walk it back and I can't remember how long how many turns I put on this thing but I think I wound it yesterday so I'm just rolling it back with pressure from my finger on the bottom and then using my thumb to, to kind of guide it back. You gotta be very patient when you're doing this because you can let go of the whole thing and then the spring will spin the whole uh, movement around. You could damage the spring, mainspring anyway. I'm not sure if you could damage other things, but you could definitely damage the mainspring by letting it go. So you just keep watching it and you'll see it moves just a bit and you can kind of feel that the spring tension is being relieved here. Um, I just heard the spring kind of unloop a little bit in there. So it's near the end. And there we go. There's nothing left. And the balance stopped turning. So <clears throat> it's a simple way of doing it. Use a toothpick so you don't scratch anything. And um, you don't have to play with any of this. So that's the first thing I would do for this watch. Now, I could take the uh, the screws out first, but I haven't worked on this particular one uh, before. I don't think so. Yeah, so I unscrew the unscrew the face on it. So before I take the uh, this out, what I do is unscrew the face and then put it in the uh, setting mode and align the the hands up like so. And I just got to have the back just sitting there. And then I grab my little hand remover devices, these two here, you get a piece of paper because you don't want to scratch the face. And then you put the paper in underneath the hands like so. And then you just put this underneath, you tuck the uh, these levers under nice and carefully and then you just pull up on them and, and the uh, hand should come off 
and I get my handy dandy tweezers so the hands both came off there and grab these and just move them out of the way and the second hand comes out and you could probably take the second hand out with a screwdriver because it doesn't take a lot of work to remove the second hand but you can just put the lever beside here and see if this will fit inside there we go and then that just comes out like that and then very carefully pick that up and put that away so that's so now I'm not worried about touching the face I'm going to clean it up a bit anyway after so so that's the face cleaned up and this case isn't a great it's not worth a lot it's base metal so as you can see hopefully it zoom that in Did that zoom there we go so it says base metal so it's not a gold filled case so I'm not sure I think base metal is probably a mix of I don't know copper or tin or some freaking thing anyway so base metal is base metal some metal from a base maybe uh, so funny so <clears throat> wish I were funnier in these videos maybe people would watch them so there's so this is one of my handy dandy movement holders and I just put that on top so it doesn't scratch anything and I've got uh, a very nice original screwdriver set here so you just use the right size to remove the screws and when you're backing them off you can hear them tick when the threads reach the end there we go so you can actually hear that little tick as the thread reach the end and you put that screw aside and it's, it's proper it's good to use the proper size screwdriver this is kind of it's probably a little small but good enough um, you don't want to use a very precise screwdriver to remove a uh, the case screws here so just grab that underneath like that and set that aside now the watch movement actually has to be out so you have to actually have the um, <clears throat> even though it seems to want to fall out yeah, it looks like it wants to fall out here you should be pulling this out like that just to get it out of the way there we go normally I'd pull that out first and then I'll leave it out have a quick look at the case just to make sure there's no uh, damage in there and then you can clean this case up later um, it looks like it's in fairly good condition not a lot of dirt there's some scrape marks and stuff like that and I find that on these cases sometimes people think that you open them by shoving a knife in here and then and then jamming it open and these are screw back but I've so often seen little marks on the side of people trying to jimmy them open with a with a case opener which is uh, not very bright but anyway so there's the movement um, so the next thing that I would do to, to in this process is I would want to take this really nice face off but I can't because there's a dust protector on the side so to remove the dust protector you use a screwdriver and you put the screwdriver between the crack the, the, the actual um, lower plate and you just twist it a bit like that then you move it around like this and you twist it again so you put the screwdriver in the slot like that and then twist it again and I was unsuccessful because there's nothing to twist there and then twist that again you can see it moving and then twist that again saying on there we go and then sometimes you got to get a bigger screwdriver that like uh, we're gonna need a bigger boat it's like Jaws I think we're gonna need a bigger screwdriver and there you go there's the dust cover and someone's calling me so I'm gonna turn the video off for a second I think it's from someone else so I'm gonna uh, turn the video off and get that phone call now the next job here is to safely remove the balance which means I've got to loosen this screw right here and that's the screw for the balance cock so the balance if you look at it this wash was running um, 
and it doesn't look like it looks like the pivots are good on the balance itself which means the balance staff is good and the spring actually looks like it's in good condition Let's see if I can zoom in is that possible um, it always takes a few seconds for this camera to zoom so and sometimes it just doesn't so it, it looks like the spring is in fairly good condition on this watch there we go the hairspring so it's not bunched up uh, there's no grease uh, between the leaves of the hairspring. I call them leaves or whatever. Um, the hairspring is most likely well centered, but you can check that as well after you take it all apart, because uh, the hairspring should be in the center where the uh, where the jewel is, so the the upper balance jewel and cap, and the hairspring rides right on the center. So if it's if it's uh, in good condition and the hairspring is centered perfectly, you'll get the best rotation out of the balance. So. So the balance seems to be no big issues here, and uh, it's not overbanked or whatever. When which means the impulse jewel is on the wrong side of the pallet fork. And sometimes I get a watch that is overbanked, and I'm like, uh, pretty easy to fix, um, but not a, not good for the watch, but easy to fix. So 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 I remove that, and again I back the screws away. I wait till I hear the little tiny tick like that and then this thing is loose and and then I usually put the screw where this this is called a balance tack so I put the screw where the balance tack is and then carefully if you go underneath this thing looks loose already so I just go under the edge here and I'm able to grab the balance very carefully I was hoping I don't screw this up and drop it because then my carefully doesn't matter then I tip the movement a bit to get the balance out and it doesn't seem to want to come out so there we go ah, come on come on come to daddy you don't want to pull on it because you'll distort the hairspring if you pull on it so you very carefully take it out like that and then drop it on top of the balance tack like that and then move the whole lot out of the way nice and carefully and we'll deal with that later. So, so there we go. So that's out of the way. And while you have this in position here, you can actually look at look at all these components. You'll look at them again, examine them more carefully later. But so it looks like as well these jewels are encased by these gold uh, settings. So there's that's very nice. Um, I'm not sure of the value behind this pocket watch, but it actually looks really nice. So. From a looks perspective, I'm impressed. So the next thing I would do, or I'm going to do, is is remove the mainspring uh, wheel. I should get the right name for that, but I can't remember. So these things sometimes they're on the other side, and then and and then this ratchet is on the other side. So it depends on the watch again, right? So so in this case, I'd put my finger down here. And these usually go counterclockwise to loosen. So lefty loosen is usually fine for these. Um, <clears throat> and righty tighty is is the other thing. So and again, when I put these down, I put them together. Um, and often I'll use a piece of rotico to take the take the top off the plate, just so I don't mark anything, right? You can just pop it up like that with Rodico, and and sometimes this comes up with Rodico as well, which it did that time. And everything looks good so far. And then when I loosen this, you often have to loosen it going um, clockwise, so the opposite direction. And that's to do with the physics of this thing. So let me see if this is the case here. No, it's not the case. You loosen this counterclockwise. Now I actually think that because this is on the left hand side and then the balance uh, wheel or whatever I call that, someone will comment on that, but anyway it's on the right hand side. If it's like this I think that you go left to loosen and right to uh, tighten just like you would in any screw, but if it's on the other side I know from all the Elgins I've done that you actually have to turn the other way, you have to turn right to loosen this. So you just apply a little bit of pressure and if you feel that it's loosening then great if you feel it's not loosening at all it feels like it's tightening just go in the other direction 
because you're uh, going to screw it up otherwise. So, and it's got a little plate on top, and this should, this might come right up, I'm not sure. No, I'm going to have to fart with it a bit here. So, it also looks like there's a little screw in here. That, there we go. So I had to lift that a bit and then take it out of the way and grab this with my, there we go. And you'll see there's a little tiny screw here and that is an alignment screw. It actually looks loose. So that wasn't even tight. So I'm going to be very careful with that based on the size of this, the size of this world's smallest screw. Um, there's a really good chance of losing that. So, so it's so important to put the parts together. I can't even zoom in on it. There it is there. It's so impart important to keep the parts together, uh, especially the screws, because you can get it caught on the back of your hand. Um, and then the screw travels wherever, wherever your arm goes. I've done that before. Kind of, kind of pisses you off because uh, you think everything is good. And then you look, go look for that last part, and you go, I know it was here somewhere. And then you're on your hands and knees looking for the parts, and then your wife comes in and says, what are you doing down there anyway? And then you're like, um, yeah, kind of lost a part here, dear. And she goes, why, why don't you just organize them? And then you go, well, I normally do, but this time I didn't, and the part's gone. So there's the stick to the arm part loss, and then the other part loss I don't like is the um, part just flung out because I grabbed it too tight with my tweezers. That hasn't happened in a long time, but I was fixing a Seiko diver's watch for a friend, and there's a click, a little ball that's used. It's a click ball for the Seiko diver's watch, and the um, and what I did was. So I just put my screwdriver in here to edge that out a bit, and this side as well, and then lift it up and out of the way, and then grab that and put these over here with the other parts. And when I get to this part of the watch, um, I usually take a picture of the keyless because there's some chance I might not have done any work on this kind of watch before and if that's the case I'm like how did this go back together I've done this a few times and found myself wondering how the heck to put it back together so a quick picture of the keyless mechanism doesn't hurt it's not gonna not gonna kill you right this thing here is not gonna want to come out easy so I'm gonna wait till after so so the little ball from the Seiko divers watch took a ride and it it hit the ground and I spent probably 20 minutes looking for it because I wanted to complete the watch and never ever found it man was I pissed off and my friend whose watch it was had to wait a little longer because I had to order a bunch of them online so I ordered five of them because I knew I'd lose some more because they tend to want to fly out and I made the mistake of having carpet down below. So if you get a carpeted floor and you lose watch parts, you're screwed. The carpet now owns the watch. So and then everybody's lost parts doing things in their life. So it's not it's not new. Actually, what I should have done before I did this was remove the cannon pinion. So. I'm a moron, but anyway, I'll try not to uh, screw that up. This is interesting. The arbor comes right out of here. Oh, look at this. Friggin' spring came right out and it detached. So this detached from the center like that. So before I go any further, I'm going to take a quick picture of that. And this is so I know the direction of the... Uh, direction of the spring. Um, I don't think that's ever happened to me before. So I think this spring should fix itself onto the uh, mainspring, but 
Um, it doesn't look like it does that. That is weird. That is one weird configuration. Yeah, because this is the uh, this is the mainspring here. And this pops right out in the barrel, so the barrel mainspring just sort of sits on top like that. That is weird. I will figure this one out after when I reassemble. So, and while I'm in the business of doing that, why don't I just take this off, see if this comes off straight up. Uh, this little Waltham is interesting. There we go. we we'll just have a look on the other side to see if there's any parts hanging there. And just quickly examine the jewels from the back. And actually, they all look like they're in excellent condition. So, no big issue there. If you just move the plate a bit, you can see the light shine off the jewel. And you don't have to get up close to see whether there's any wear or not. Um, then you can put your eyepiece on and have a good look at it after. So that looks like it's in pretty good condition. Now, like I said, I should have taken the Canon pinion out on the other side. So, But I didn't. Now, the other thing I like to do is take another picture of all the gears as they go in there. And that way, this is the third or fourth picture. That way, when I could put the gears back... I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to figure it out. Usually I can figure it out pretty easily, but, but I don't like to work too hard. So, so these seem to be pretty easy. This whole thing is kind of flat. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of, um, uh, what do we call it? Entertaining features on the inside here to help you do this properly. Um, yeah, so this is, the way this goes in and this looks like it's caught up in a plate on the inside so again I'm leaving this here I'm gonna flip this over and have a look at the cannon pinion and you know what again so it's always good to show somebody all your mistakes in doing watches because it's Sunday morning and and I made another one but it wasn't a huge one but I should have taken the face off the watch first before I start any of this crap. So I'm going to do that right now. Because I just realized I forgot to take the face off. And that's again another thing that when you're making movies, if you had a script or you had a director and producer, then this would work really well. But I don't have a script. So sometimes I forget what the hell I'm doing. But it's like anything else that you're kind of disassembling. As long as you can put it back together, no problem, right? So, just loosen those screws for the faceplate, for the face of the watch. And then you get your screwdriver in there and then just wedge it on, open a bit. Then you can use your thumb to retain the, uh, the space that you've made. And then wedge your finger in there. And then eventually the whole thing will come apart and then have a look at the back and it all looks kosher yeah, it looks good so you put that down out of the way and now if I look here at the movement I've got I've got my center wheel here that I've got a this gear here I've got to remove and often there's a little leaf on the top of there that keeps the face from pressing on the gear which can stall the whole movement from moving so there's that gear and then there's this little gear here that usually just comes up and out it's kind of sticky right now so it's here that's the minute here I believe someone else will correct me on that again probably and then if I pull the cannon I like I hate doing this without having the back on but if you just grab your, your tweezers and you pull up it usually comes out which it just did I had problems with the PEC watches. I made a video on the PEC watch, and pulling out the Canon pinion on the PEC watch was a pain in the pecker, I guess is a good term. Eh? Pain in the butt, Butinsky. And there's the center wheel. So that's out. And I guess last but not least, I should remove the pallet fork. So the pallet fork's right here. and. Zoom in for this operation because it's really tight. 
There we go. So that's where the palette fork is. And again, when you make movies, it's really tough to do this stuff when you're making a movie. And here we go. And again, when you pull this out, you want to be careful that you that you don't bend the pivots on the palette fork. This thing, whole thing looks like it can come out actually. So I'm just going to grab it like this and move it out of the way. The screw intact, and then I'm going to grab the uh, palette fork and lift it straight up. And that way I don't bend it at all. And there are two schools of thought with the, uh, the actual palette fork. One school says you don't oil, you don't put any oil on this, you just let it rattle around inside the jewels. Another school says you oil it and then you um, you oil it and then you uh, with uh, 90 10 oil or whatever and then you uh, and that's required but I don't either way I think you probably don't oil it so so there we go that's a part so I'm gonna I think fart around with this a bit turn the video off and then see what's next so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually clean this watch but I'm not going to videotape the full cleaning of the watch again I'm just gonna do it and then come back later but you can see the dirt just to prove it you can see some of the dirt on the back of the watch here so the grime on the edges here and the jewels are probably pretty gummed up too so what I use to clean it by hand which is a lot of work I use um, a piece of wood here I'm not sure if this is called pith wood or whatever but anyway I use wood and these are the clean clean out the um, the jewel holes so I, it's called peg wood so I peg out the jewel holes um, and I do that actually after I've cleaned the watch and I use to clean a watch I actually use lighter fluid I just use lighter fluid to clean the watch and then I use three different types of oils and somebody asked me a while back what that other that yellow oil was I think it was in a video and I had some crazy I had some funky oil and I'll just really quickly show you the oil types I use. So, and just so you know that there is different types of oil to use to clean a watch. And I use, let's see if I can get these right. So this oil is 9010. So this oil is the is the oil that you use for the finer. There we go. And expired 2021 that's really good so so this oil is a very fine oil and that's the oil that I'll be using for I'll be using that for the escapement I'll be using that for the you see one two three four fourth wheel third wheel um, fourth wheel and or the third wheel and then I switch to when I get when there's more um, friction not more uh, what's the word more torque on the actual gear you have to switch to an oil that has a higher or lower viscosity. It's it's thicker, so it would be a higher viscosity, right? I'm an electrical engineer, not a chemical engineer, so this is my um, 2020. So this oil here is it looks red. So somebody asked me that the other day, and it's a red oil, and this will focus someday. So this this oil is come on, focus. There you go. So this is 2020. Um, actually, this is Mobius 1300. I said 2020. It's 9104. So it's not 2020. I'm a bonehead. So this oil is a little thicker than the other oil, and you use it on on. Um, and like I said, the first wheel is your is your mainspring. Second wheel is your center wheel. So you use it on on your first. Right on the on the uh, jewel or the opening for the first, um, then the second and the third wheel, um, but then the, you switch to the to the uh, to the uh, 9010 that I showed you earlier after, and this should be the red stuff. So that's this oil here. So you don't use a lot of it, but it's a thicker viscosity, right? Or Maybe it's a higher viscosity, but anyway, it's thicker. Did I tell you I wasn't in chemical engineering? So anyway, 
And then this is a thinner one. Let me take this out here. And as you can see, there's this oil here. These aren't cheap. They're like 50, 60 bucks a bottle for a couple of ounces. So you got to use them sparingly. So, so that one there is um, used for the th less torque gears, higher, faster movement gears. And then there's the microgliss, right? Which is this here. And you can use the D5 microgliss for the keyless mechanisms. So this helps. It's like 2017 expired, but I'm not too concerned. Anyway, because this, this is for your keyless mechanism, so it's greasier, as if I could say that. And then if you have a mainspring that's going to be sliding around inside the barrel, and basically it doesn't hook, but it's for an automatic watch or whatever, and it needs to slide, you put this, right, on the edge of your barrel. So, again, I want this thing to focus so you can see it. So I'll just entertain you while we're waiting. It's natural grease. You put that on the edge of your barrel. Again, you're going to com complain about the expiry date, like 2017, but I think this can go a lot longer than 2017. It's not turning into anything, okay? So, again, you could argue with me, but I'm not planning on changing this around. So it's natural grease. It's 8213, um, and there's a lot of it. So you'd have to do a lot of watches. And then the final oil, right, is this little cute bottle here. And this stuff here is 9415, Mobius 9415. And it has kind of a, the consistency looks kind of like gel, right? So if I'm just going to poke this in here to make sure to see it. So you can look at that, you see that there's, it's kind of like jello kind of consistency. And this here, you take a very small bit of it, right? And you put this, while the pallet fork is in place, right? You take this and you put it on the pallet fork, but you can, I typically don't put it on the pallet fork itself. What I do is I grab the escapement, let me grab this here, like this. And I put a couple of dabs on like every third or fourth of the teeth of this escapement, right? And then it passes it, it along to the pallet fork. That way I don't have a gob of it on the pallet fork. And it'll catch it. And the chemical properties of this particular Mobius 9415 are that when, when there's pressure on it, the viscosity changes. So it gets a lot of visco more viscous, I guess, uh, when there's pressure on it. And then when the pressure is relieved from it, it gets less viscous, which ensures that it stays in place. So it gets kind of more liquidy when there's pressure. So when the, when the uh, stone from the pallet fork hits the escapement, right, it, it basically pressurizes this, lubricates it, and then when it releases from it, um, it hardens up again doesn't really harden, but it's, it goes back into a jello form, which ensures that it stays in place. So this actually will improve the uh, the rotation of that escapement, which improves the power going all the way through the mechanisms right to the pallet fork. Because um, any piece of any anything in that whole gear train that's not working absolutely uh, frictionless, say as much as possible, will slow the watch down. Right, which means your timing will be inaccurate if the watch isn't consistently uh, running at a consistent speed and the power is going from the mainspring all the way through. So, so this is uh, is used for that. So you got to have some of this. And also, last note is that when I put the main after I clean the uh, mainspring, let me just bring this up here for a second and take this off if I can. Um, I got to put this goopy stuff down somewhere. So. Once I clean, see if I can pull this apart easily. There we go. Once I clean the mainspring, I'll pull that out, clean it, wind it back in. I'll put a couple of dabs of the uh, Mobius, Mobius, Mobius uh, 9104, right? Which is also called the 1300, I think, uh, yeah, there, it's trying to focus here. 
the Mobius 1300 aka the 9104 so I'll put a couple of dabs of this and that's the blue oil you saw or the uh, red oil you saw earlier and I'll, I'll, I'll put a line of it in four places across the spring to lubricate the spring um, and then as the spring is used that'll pass that lubrication along to other parts of the spring and that and that works quite well so so that's all I'm going to do for now with this video. I might take another shot after I've cleaned it and reassembled, take the keyless apart. I'm not going to videotape that, it'll take forever. But after I've scrubbed it up nicely um, and reassembled it, uh, hopefully you'll see a really good amplitude on the watch. It'll be running really well. So I'm off to do that, and perhaps we'll see you later. All right, the wash has been cleaned and partly reassembled. I just wanted to mention a few things before I reassemble the watch. The first thing is when you, um, actually I'm going to move the camera a little bit here. I hate to do this live, but what the hell, right? So when you reassemble the watch, there's a few things here. So the first thing is that when you're putting the plates on, if you've got if you've got a bunch of pivots you need to get through, like this one, two, three, four pivots, it's not that easy sometimes. It'll just fall into place. So once you've laid the gears down, you have to sometimes take it from the edge here. And I use this little dental pick. And <clears throat> and you just take it from the edge here and you nudge the pivots until they're aligned with the holes. And you try to get the, the big ones on first. So what I typically do is I get the big one, this one on here, the, the uh, center wheel or the second right so and I put the screw in and then I then I put this screw in as well but I leave it loose right so I put the screw in I leave it loose but a little little bit not snug but a little little on there so this stays in place this is a little less tight and this one is, is definitely not tight at all and so I've got the main plate on here have that on play with this once I get this one here to drop and this one here to drop, I'll tighten these a little tiny bit, but not a lot. And then I'll leave this one loose and I'll play with this one and I'll tighten this one. And you just kind of play that game. Some of the pocket watches are full plate pocket watches and you got to play the game from the side and you got to do a lot. Um, I'm getting better at it. I think it's a skill uh, more than anything. And so you've got to basically use this tool here and then put it all on. And, and after I've got the all the wheels in place, and the ratchets and stuff so and tighten down then I'll take my uh, bench key here that I have and I'll stick that in the side and then I'll just turn this ever so slightly and as you can see the uh, everything's turning freely so that's just a test to see if um, everything works before I put the uh, before I put the uh, escapement in and the pallet fork. Because once I put the pallet fork in with the escapement, the escapement's in, but once I put the pallet fork in, then you really can't tell. Then you have to kind of do what I call the nudge test and just snap it back and forth to make sure it's done. Now, the last thing is I haven't cleaned the bottom jewel here. So after I've assembled all of this, before I put the um, escapement back, uh, or sorry, the uh, balance back in place, I will reverse that put it take it from the other side um, and I will right here I'll unscrew this and I'll clean the cap and I'll clean the jewel itself so it's all cleaned up right then I'll and, and then um, there's a little bit of oiling done here but not much so so then I'll put that back together and away we go so I'm going to cut out and reassemble this and do a little bit of oiling and then I'll be back hopefully with the final product and I wanted to show you the watch taken away so it's looking like it's um, moving quite well I'm gonna do a slow-mo and then look at the amplitude to make sure it's good but it's way better than it was before so that's the watch working away um, I still have to put a little bit of oil in the uh, jewels on the top I haven't done that yet so which may help it even more so there we go I'm going to put the face back on the watch, but before I do that, I'm going to put on the minute gear. I think this is the minute gear. Anyway, put that on. I put a little bit of oil around the, the pivot there for that gear as well. And then this is the hour gear, I believe. So I'll put that on there. There we go. 
Oh, make sure it's very carefully drop it into place. There we go. And there was no leaf in there, because typically there's a leaf in there. So all I have to do to figure out how this plate goes on is that you look at where the where it would wind straight down. It's not a hunter, so where it would wind, you go straight down from here, and then you see the second the second uh, hand here, and then you take the face and you line it up with that like this, and then it should drop right into place. There we go. So that's in place like this. And then you can just pick the wash up carefully. And on the side, tighten this tightens the little uh, the face to the plate. You rotate it and watch your fingers so you don't touch the escapement as it's moving around or the balance rather as it's moving around because you can screw it up bend it all kinds of crap so you have to be very careful I think I did this one already I think yeah and this is the last one here and you can see the watch is just taken away then you just sing to zoom me there we go and then just tighten this one up. Now you don't need to over tighten these because the face is not going to jump off and go somewhere. There we go. So that's tightened up. And then you recase it. So that's running quite well. Um, what I typically do is I put the hands on first. So I'll put the hands on and then I'll recase it. Now the little, little trick I discovered for putting hands on is that you use a piece of erotico and grab the hands with the erotico then you have the little device that's used to push the hands on and again this might not work because I'm filming it you line it up to the 12 make sure I get the right end of this so and then you can use erotico to push it left or right just a bit like that and then you push the hand on like so and then check it from the side to make sure it's lined up yeah we're good there and then you grab the second hand and you look at where the hour hand is if the hour hand isn't absolutely at the top then you can move the second hand just slightly over because you know when it's at the top then it'll be perfectly lined up can move it just slightly over and then again very difficult with the videotaping but you push it down and you gotta make sure there's clearance so you look at it and if it looks like there's not enough clearance you can rock it back from the back and if it looks like there's too much clearance you can rock it forward so I ended up rocking it forward there's plenty of clearance there but it wouldn't interfere with the crystal so that's good there and then the last hand to put on is the second hand and that one is dead easy to do so I got a piece of erotico here but typically I'll just put the second hand down like this and then slide it over the second hand post like so and then just push it down with your screwdriver like that and there you go the hands are on so and it shouldn't interfere then I can check really quickly to make sure these the hands are will, will, will work and clear everything so what I do is just rotate the hands around and then you check your hour hand to make sure your hour hand is going to clear the second hand. There's no problems at all. And you get them on top of each other and then look sideways. And there's tons of room there. There's a, no issue at all. But, uh, hour hand looks like it's got a little bit of a bend in it. So, And I'm clearing that hour hand by a lot. So, in fact, by so much, I may push it down just a bit more.
because the clearance is uh, crazier. And that might do there. And then I've got to check again. So, let's see. That looks pretty good there. You know, there's tons of clearance here. So, clearance for clearance. So, that's pretty good there. So then I'll check my 12 o'clock position to make sure that there's that spot on. It should be pretty close. So there's 12 o'clock. And you see the hands are perfectly aligned. So the hour hand was slightly off and I, so I had to put my minute hand over here a bit. And sometimes you can do the math if the hour hand is touching there and is one, two, three, four, five gradients and you do the math on where the minute hand should be. And that's how you put your hands on. So the hands are on. And I've got to recase it. So to recase it, you just make sure that this is out, which I left it in the out position. Like that. I've got the correct side to put it in. So very carefully lifting it up. Make sure I don't touch anything. I'm trying to do this as a close-up. It's tough to do as a close-up. So. so then you put that in the case and you can just move the uh, crown a bit to make sure the stem sits in there nicely like so and I've got it in place there and I'm gonna wash my fingers because I don't want to touch the hands and so everything seems to be in place nicely so I typically just hold it like this with my hands and then I'll grab the uh, I'll grab the case screws here, that, and drop them in place. I might as well put them both in place while I got the tweezers in my hands, like that. And then pick a screwdriver. And I'll tighten the top one here because it's going to be perfectly seated because of the stem aligning it. And then when I pull it up, it kind of pulls the whole movement up, which it just did. And then when I screw this one down, there won't be as much of a hassle. So I find that works best too. Do little tips and tricks that I've figured out over the years. I don't have a lot of years doing this, but I've done a lot of it. So I'm not sure if that counts. Kind of like the athlete that skis for four years and then wins the Olympics. Doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So I think uh, Eddie the Eagle was the guy who did it, right? You remember Eddie the Eagle? So there we go. And I'm just going to put this together for now. And I will be timing this later. So just screw the screw this uh, the front on. That way I can hold it upside down and screw the back on. That's pretty good there. Um, I also want to do some work on the case so it looks nicer. So there's the, the watch ticking away. So I'll screw this on, then I'll time it and see where we're at with respect to its uh, time, and then I can do whatever adjustments are needed here. So, But it's working quite well now. It looks like it's got quite a swing on the balance. So that's it. I'm going to uh, I'll just screw this on for a second so the last picture you see is the completed watch. There it is. That is a pretty cool looking watch. It's going to be hard to sell it. It may not sell this because it's so cool looking. So that's it. That's a Waltham and it's a Mason uh, pocket watch. The Masons love those skulls. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope this was enjoyable. I'm going to turn this into a video. Well, that's what you're watching now. So, uh, in the words of uh, Mike Myers or Dr. Evil, <laughs>